Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Unreal Fest 2025 is going on right now and one of the biggest announcements has to be Unreal Engine 5.6 is now released. It came out uh, in May uh, in 5.6 preview version but now the full version is here and we've got a couple of highlight features. What you're seeing in the background, this is footage from Unreal Fest and specifically about the announcement of the release of Unreal Engine 5.6. Now I would say the key pillars of this release are around a couple of different concepts. One, everyone loves us performance, better performance, uh, optimization, some of the uh, single-threaded issues they are running into in the past. Uh, we have some new techniques to make rendering happen faster, but probably the biggest new feature here is going to be that um, MetaHumans is now integrated directly into Unreal Engine 5.6. Now, it's not fully there. Some of the more advanced features are still rendered server-side, and you dispatch them from a local client, but to you, it feels pretty much like it's all local, and a lot of the stuff is now processed locally as well. There was actually a couple of other big announcements around MetaHumans as well. Specifically, uh, you can now use MetaHumans in other game engines or with other tools. That was a previous limitation we had, uh, and it was one of those few areas where you couldn't use um, Unreal Engine content in other engines. That has actually been changed. The terms and services have been updated, so you can use MetaHumans in other game engines now. And I'm curious to see if we are going to see new tooling come. And the kind of semi-related to that we now also have uh, fab support for metahuman things like clothing and models and so on uh, by the way if you're in the market for stuff do stay tuned to the end of this video there are a ton of bundles going on right now for unreal engine users i will have them summarized at the end there are also links down below using my links does help support us all right so metahumans is definitely a very big part of the unreal engine 5.6 release uh, but that is not it another thing i actually found really shocking from the uh release details is just how much uh, CD Projekt Red are dog fooding new features on uh, the development of Witcher 4. Like they're using some of this cutting edge stuff from Unreal Engine 5.6, just like uh, Epic Games do with Fortnite. So hopefully it makes a lot of these new tools, especially around the world of animation, more robust when it actually comes out and comes to you. So yeah, that is another big area here. We got a ton of new animation and rigging tools here as well. Um, kind of a shocking amount of new stuff. We also got some new things from performance side of things like uh, geometry streaming for static geometry. Again, a lot of optimization things going on so we got some tweaks to the user interface as well we got some new rendering stuff because of course we do this is unreal engine we were talking about here some improvements to mobile development and of course around the idea of virtual production so now i'm just going to go ahead we're going to jump into the release notes at this point in time and kind of go through that we're going to go to the top level release notes i'm going to show you the other release notes shortly but you're going to realize why we're not paying too much attention to them because there is a lot there all right so Unreal Engine 5.6, what do we have? Again, a lot of it is around performance, moving towards that 60 frames per second on high NPCs, modern phones, and consoles. Uh, so all of the demos they were showing of Witcher 4 running, they said were running on a PlayStation 5. I don't know if it was a pro or not, uh, running at 60 frames per second. So that is the target here. Uh, one of the new things we've got here is hardware ray tracing. Uh, so enhancements there uh, just for better performance for lumen, lumen global illumination. Uh, they eliminate CPU bottlenecks, author more complex scenes while maintaining a smoother 60 frames per second. Um, in addition, they made significant improvements to the overall Unreal Engine performance when streaming cat static content. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier on, the Geometry Streaming plugin. Now, this is marked as experimental, so that doesn't guarantee that it's ever actually going to be added. Uh, it, basically, things go experimental, and if they work out, they become beta, and then eventually they get added as full release. So, experimental may never happen, and sure as hell, don't be using this in a production environment. So, you can create a, gener uh, a greater amount of immutable, so basically static, oh, static, Immutable, static. Okay, immutable basically means you can't change it. Static means you can't move it. So I guess they are separate words there, and I'm just getting confused here. Geometry in your world that will load faster with constant frame rates. Additionally, all projects will benefit from further improvements over content streaming, such as asynchronous physics state creation and destruction. Now, this is one of those areas where they actually said that a lot of the Unreal Engine 5.x bottlenecks come from is this lack of parallelization of the code. So it seems like that's where they're focusing on a lot of their optimizations. Uh, they also updated device profiles that are optimized for 60 frames per second and tailored for current generation consoles and desktop platforms. Um, on top of that, accelerations to the animation authoring. You're going to find there is a ton of new functionality here. One of the big things is complete re redesign of motion trails. 
So unified for both actors and characters, because you can adjust your arcs and spacing directly in the viewport. Choose from style like dash, time-based, heat, speed mode, and access features that include pinning, offsets, and spaces for even more precision. They also have a number of updates to the tweening tools. Uh, so they've been revamped to enable you to fine-tune animations on controls or selected keys more quickly. They've also added new hotkeys to control the sliders indirectly, as well as the ability to toggle between different slider types and switch to overshoot mode. And with the addition of the new time offset slider, you can create and edit with even greater control. So tons of improvements on the animation side of things. They also redesigned the curve editor, you can see in action here, to a bar for speed and performance, making it easier and cleaner for you to manipulate uh, keyframes. We've streamlined and consolidated icons embedded our new tween tools directly within the curve editor interface to give you quicker access also added a new lattice tool and smart key snapping features for greater control over dense keyframe data uh, and then the sequencer got updates enabling you to better control your timeline you can navigate complex hierarchies with the brand new sequencer navigation tool sync animation dialogue and effects confidently using real-time audio scrubbing. Uh, we've also expanded Sequencer's ability to scale relatively, experimental again, based on localized audio, enabling sequences to match the timing from different languages. They also introduced, again, experimental solutions to enable more in-editor rigging workflows. You can now create and sculpt morph targets, experimental, uh, directly in-editor with the skeletal mesh editor. It leverages Unreal Engine's built-in modeling tools, enabling you to create and edit pre-existing morph targets and sculpt blend shapes during the play in editor. It's actually kind of staggering the amount of modeling and animation tools that are slowly being built into Unreal Engine. And I really do wonder if we're ever going to see Unreal basically replacing, you know, 3D Studio's Max Maya Blender, uh, or will it just supplement them? It's going to be interesting to see. And then we also got a ton of new animation tools here, animation control rig, uh, again, experimental, making it easy to add procedural physics motion to character rigs for dynamic movement. Also add experimental new built-in ragdoll physics with the rig to create more uh, lifelike responsive animations. Now this is part that's actually really kind of interesting because again, this is all coming from Witcher 4, meaning that uh, CD Projekt Red are completely denying what I just said to do and not use this stuff in production because it looks like they are very much using this in the development of Witcher 4. Again, MetaHumans completely in editor now. Well, I shouldn't say completely. It is integrated fully into uh, Unreal Engine Editor now. Uh, also, the new Unreal Engine Outfit assets makes it possible to generate complete outfits, automatically resize with them, uh, and there is a significant expansion of the database of real-world scans of faces as well as bodies. Uh, and then on top of that, MetaHuman Animator enables you to capture actors' performance in real time on most webcams and many smartphones, as well as from audio. They demonstrated this in the uh, State of Unreal thing, of basically showing someone doing real-time mocap facial cap. It was very impressive, and it was just using a commercial webcam. Uh, you can also expect to see MetaHumans in more places with the new licensing options in the EULA. EULA, uh, enabling MetaHumans to be used with other engines uh, or creative software. So you can now use MetaHumans externally, which is pretty cool. I may actually do a dedicated video on that. I'm not 100% certain yet. Expanded ecosystem also includes new plugins for DCCs and integration with Fab Marketplace. So those new plugins are uh, a new grooming tool, a hair tool, and uh, Maya integrations for facial rigs. The, the hair tool uh, was for Houdini, and then obviously the Maya tool was for Maya. Uh, so improvements there. They also did some updates to the user interface. Um, so they simplify the user experience. Uh, up at the top here, they've really streamlined what the bar is. So you can see right here, this new option. By the way, you can turn this off. So if you wanna go back to the old way that these toolbars were represented, that is an option there as well. They also did some updates, very, very subtle in the content browser. Uh, but this one you're going to notice in the viewport right away. So they've reconsolidated and rejigged how the menus work, reordered the menus, etc. Again, the old options are still available to you. A uh, number of improvements for the um, developer side of things. The project launcher has been completely redesigned for improved usability and efficiency. And Zen Streaming is now in beta. The feature in, uh, enhances productivity by eliminating the time-consuming steps of full package builds and copy install deployments. Uh, and then we've got some improvements to the procedural content generation tools as well. Uh, so gr no graph UX is in beta, uh, has been updated to support inline constant, uh, making it easier for you to create, drag and drop and manipulate elements. Also introduced a new 3D viewport in beta. Uh, that means you can uh, preview points, textures and meshes directly inside of the viewport. Major improvements to the GPU, beta performance improvements, uh, boost stability, particularly in managing instances with dense, complex scenes. Uh, and then uh, overall PCG uh, performance has also been improved. Again, back to that, uh, improved threading support. That does seem to be one of the big things that they are looking at with Unreal Engine 5.0, with Unreal Engine 6 branch, 
is more at the core, but they're doing what they can to update these things. And then finally, uh, they updated Biomes, which is experimental, is now faster and more intuitive uh, with the PCG Biome Core V2 plugin, new features like per biome blending and biome layering support, give you greater control to rich organic environments uh, more effectively, uh, improvements to uh, performance capture and cinematics, MoCap Manager is an experimental new feature, and then solution for visualizing, recording, and managing performance capture all within Unreal Engine itself. Uh, they integrated it uh, with Live Link Hub, offering precise control uh, metahumans from mobile devices. Um, Cinematics released a new pipeline friendly cinematic assembly tool, or CAT, uh, and then more. Now, the weird thing here is I don't see anything about uh, foliage support for Nanite, because that was another one of the big announcements they had. I, I, may have, I may have skimmed over that one here in the release notes, but there is obviously a ton to be excited about in Unreal Engine 5.6. Now, I did mention earlier on, full release notes are available, and there's more. There's, there's a whole lot more. They're all here, and we'll be scrolling for a very long time to get to the bottom of it. So if you want more details of what is available in Unreal Engine 5.6, uh, do be sure to check out the full release notes. But again, at the top level, we got a lot of new animation tools. We have in integrated MetaHuman uh, creator stuff directly. Uh, and then, of course, user interface and our user experience improvements there. And then, of course, the performance stuff, which uh, people always appreciate better performance. Unreal has taken a lot of flack lately over this, so I think that's an area where they are definitely focusing on. And as I mentioned earlier on, there are a number of Unreal Engine deals going on you probably want to be aware of. Uh, we have the Star Nova bundle. Uh, this one is five packs of Unreal Engine stuff. Use the code SN40. It becomes $9.99. And then there's this one, which is 15 packs on Gumroad. Road. This one used the code SN70. It becomes $39.99. And then we also have two humble bundles for Unreal Engine developers here. The Big Bang, Unreal, and Unity, and also Godot. Uh, asset Packs Bundle, uh, 75 assets here, actually from the same creator as what we saw there from the Gum Road collection. And then we also have the Level Up uh, 5K World Builder Bundle. This one is going to be over very, very shortly, though, if you have not already picked it up. This one is from Decagon, Meshing Gun, and Fresh Can. Again, a number of environments for Unreal Engine and then environmental props, etc. I'm a sucker for environments, so I absolutely love these things. And again, all the links are down below. Using them will help support me. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Unreal Engine 5.6. Again, the part I found really shocking from Unreal Fest is just how much Witcher, and, and it's I guess by extension CD Projekt Red, are using these experimental features, especially the animation stuff and, and some of the rendering side of things. It's staggering how dog food that stuff actually is. But I guess that's good for the rest of us. And I'm curious, what do you think of Unreal Engine 5.6? Is there something there you like, something there you hate? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.